Uh, I'm going to read our kind of foundation scripture today. And um, in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20, it says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. That means they died. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now notice, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruit, afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. That's the order. Afterward, those that are Christ at his coming. Now listen to this. Then comes the end. Now, you know, preachers have been preaching about the end and written about the end for a long time. And I know um, sometimes people say, well, I've been in this for years and I've been hearing that for years. Well, that just means you're closer today than the words the first time you heard it. Amen. Amen. But we have, we, listen, we're living in an age today where we're seeing signs we've never seen before. I mean, Jesus pointed clearly to Israel becoming a nation is a generation that would not pass away till the end, till Jesus comes to get us and the end begins. And so uh, we, we have some direct understanding, and there are, mo- there are a lot more. Uh, a minister friend of mine, Joe Morris, who's been at the church, said he's found 80 different signs that are, that are here now that were not available even uh, 10, 15 years ago. Wow. So we understand and realize that we're there, we're at the end, and here's the thing I'm trying to get across to you, and hopefully by now you're getting it. If you're new, uh, this is your first Sunday, then I'll repeat it for you, but but the Bible teaches that that we're going to be taken up. The church is going to be taken up. It's called the rapture. We call it the rapture, but but, uh, and that is going to begin what we call the end. When the church leaves. And, uh, and again, I'm not going to get into that today. But so some people say, well, you don't know when that's going to happen. Well, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians and said, well, you know the time because you're not living in darkness. If you don't live in darkness, you live in light, you know. Well, the other thing we can do is we can go read what Paul said and what Peter said about what, what was going to start transpiring at the end. And we're seeing it today. We're seeing the nations align. You know, I mean, Russia and Iran, they're they're being tied together right now. Why? Well, because they're going to be together coming against Israel. Amen. So um, the disciples, and I'm going to just read this in Matthew 24, 3, asked Jesus, tell us when all these things will be, what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the age. So in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is talking to them about what they can look for. And uh, I don't want to get into all, I don't want to get into all of this, but I've been focusing on one particular area that Jesus talked about, and that's Matthew 24, verse 37. Jesus said this, he said, it'll be like the days of Noah were so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day, everybody say the day. Amen. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Pretty strong. Amen. And did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. I believe that the, the, Noah entering into the ark is a sign or an example of us leaving the earth. Because it's going to be dramatic. It's going to be dramatic. And it is going to happen. Well, I don't believe that. Well, you just stay. I don't, you, you, that's fine. Everything was the same. Now listen until Noah and his family entered the ark. So uh, 
I, I believe that we're living in this world right now, but we're not of this world. We're about to enter into the ark. Now, I know people say, well, that's the ark of salvation. I, I believe that to an extent, but I also believe it's a time frame, a time frame, a signal, so to speak. So <clears throat> the Bible also talks about that Noah had attributes that actually have been passed on to the believer today. And I want to focus on one. I've talked about it a little bit, but I want to go a little different direction with it today. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, it says, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart were evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he'd made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. Isn't that amazing? Do you understand how close that means God is to us? What kind of relationship we have that he actually was grieved about? Grieved about him about it? Because it was his creation? So the Lord said, I'll destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man, beast, creeping thing, birds of the air, for I'm sorry that I made them. But now listen to this next verse. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found something or God saw something different working in Noah's life and it was called grace. Now, let me just tell you right now, I promise you that that grace is not the same grace that we talk about today. Because that grace that we have only came by one person, and his name was Jesus. But God gave him grace. He saw something in, Mo in Noah, and I believe it was his faith at work. And he said, I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you favor. And so he did. He gave him favor. But it's such an explosive statement. But I want you to listen to me today because this is what I want to talk about. And I want you to hear what the Spirit of God's saying today. The closer to the grace in your life, the more powerful you will be in the days to come. If you think you can just live like you want to live and do what you want to do and call on the grace of God when you get in trouble, you're mistaken if that's the lifestyle you think you should be living. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Because that's not the way we live our lives. We, we have received this grace by faith, and it's something that we walk in every day. And I've, I talked about this on a Wednesday night about being empowered by the grace of God and, and walking in that. And I don't want to get, um, I don't want to get back over into that. But here's what I want you to listen to today because I want to tell you the world has no clue what's coming. They have no clue what's coming. And one of the reasons that there, there, there is no understanding about it is because God's grace is at work right now. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. So there's a grace working. Even though people don't like it, they reject it, they're not walking in it, it's still around. It's still here. It's still available for anybody who will accept Jesus. God gives them grace. But we have this grace for a season. Now listen to me, and I'm going to show you this from the Word today. That grace is coming to an end. That grace that you and I enjoy, and to a certain degree, even the world enjoys, because listen, you think the world was worse than it is today? It's like Billy Graham said one time, if God doesn't do something in America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said that back in the 80s. Well, I just don't understand how they keep going and how they keep doing that because, listen to me, 
God is not willing that any should perish. And I'm going to show you this. And so there is a long suffering right now with God. But listen to me. Then comes the end. There's an end to this. I, I know that sounds terrible. Well, but you know, God loves everybody and he's going to love everybody. Well, you might want to go read Revelations because that's not what it says. Well, Jesus loves everybody. You might want to go read the first three chapters that he sent to the churches. Okay, just so you know, listen to me. We have a very poor understanding of the grace of God. Yes, thank God it's there. If it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here tonight, standing here today. I mean, it was God's grace that, and, and his salvation that I received. I mean, it, 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 listen to me. It, it could not by works of righteousness, which we've done, not by that, but because of his grace. The things that have happened in your life as a, be, a believer, the grace of God's on you, whether you realize it or not. I, I dare say, I'd, I, I would probably say 100% I'd be dead right now if I hadn't accepted Jesus. If I hadn't stepped over into his grace, I'd be gone. Amen. So, so you have to understand that. But this grace is for a season. And it's coming to a close. Let me just read you a couple of scary scriptures. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Wow. Well, that's not talking about believers. Yeah, well, you read it however you want. Okay, I'm not trying to scare, I'm not really trying to scare you today. I'm trying to get you to understand this, this season is about to come to an end. In fact, to be honest with you, in a sense, it's already the beginning of sorrows. It's already moving to that end. Just hang with me. Let me read you another one. Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. You have become estranged from Christ. You attempt to be justified by the law. You have fallen from grace. Wow. Man, I don't even want to get close to the edge of falling. I don't want to get anywhere around anything that would cause me to stumble and fall. But you know, listen to me. To be honest with you, most Christians are living in that gray area right now, dependent on the grace of God. And I, I understand that, but the bottom line is that's not where we're supposed to live our lives. Let me read you another scripture. The since it's, you know, we're going into the Halloween season, I'm gonna <laughs> preach on scary scriptures. Yeah, okay. 1 Peter 3.20, I'm going to read this out of the message translation. It'll save me some time. Listen. Because they wouldn't listen, you know, even though God waited patiently all the days that Noah built his ship, God was waiting patiently the whole time Noah was building his ship. What was he waiting for? Somebody to listen to Noah. Because the Bible says the whole time he was building the ship, he was preaching on righteousness. Being right, living right, doing right. Thank you for that amen. I thought I heard one whispered somewhere. Okay. Now listen to what it said. Waited patiently all the days that Noah built the ship and only a few were saved. Eight to be exact. Saved from the water by the water. You know, you could preach on that, but I better move on. So, you understand the, the resemblance here? It wasn't like God condemned the world. Listen, God condemned the world and said, now build this ark, Noah, for you and your family. 
That's not what God was waiting. I'm building this for an ark. I'm waiting on you. But nobody responded. I feel pretty good that, I, I mean, I preach, some people, people get saved. When Noah preached, nobody, nobody got saved. Nobody listened. So I feel pretty good. So let me read you another one. Scary scripture day. Romans chapter two, verse four. Don't you see, I'm reading this out of the New Living Translation. Listen, don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? It's not to approve of your sin so you can live like you want. His kindness is there to try to turn you toward him. The Amplified Bible is a little scarier. Verse four and five, listen. Are you so blind as to trifle with and presume upon and despise and underestimate the wealth of his kindness and forbearance and long suffering and patience? Are you unmindful or actually ignorant of the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent, to change your mind and your inner man, to accept God's will? Now listen to the next verse. But by your callous stubbornness and impenitent heart, <clears throat> I'm not talking to anybody here today. I'm just, there are probably people watching on TV or on the internet that, you know, so don't want to offend anybody today. You call me stubborn. Well, I'm not calling you anything. But by your callous and stubborn impenitence of heart, you, now listen, you are storing up wrath and indignation for yourself. Can I say it? This? On the day. On the day. On the day. Just like there was a day when the door shut on Noah's ark. On the day, you ready for this? Of wrath and indignation. You still with me? When God's righteous judgment, just doom will be revealed. So, so listen to me today. We're living in the grace of God right now. Okay? Okay. I will to say it this way. If you're in church, there is, a, there is some grace working there in your life. Okay? You wouldn't be in church if there wasn't. Okay? But listen to me. Wherever you are on the spectrum of grace, you can always walk in a stronger place. A closer place to God. A closer place, here's a better way to put it, to the will of God for your life. You got it? But did you notice that right in the midst of all this long-suffering, kindness, forbearance, patience, that on the day there will be wrath and indignation? So there's a day. Well, just tell me when it is. Why? Why do you want to know the day? The only reason people want to know the day is so they can do what they want to do until the day. Why not just be ready any day, any time? Why not be walking in the will of God for your life all the time? Why not be serving God, worshiping God? Reading his letters to you, his love letters to you. Serving in, and I'm going to show you this if I can get to it, serving in the church. You know the crazy thing to me about this is 
Listen to me. People think church is a, is, is a, is a choice. It's your connection. It's your connection to life. Well, I don't like what you're preaching. I'm going to go somewhere else. Listen. Listen to me. That's a dangerous thought. That you, you could choose that. I, I'm not trying to keep you. If, if you say go, you're going to go. I have people all the time tell me, well, the Lord told me to do this. And the Lord told me to do that. I had a man one time tell me, uh, he was in my church. And he said, well, the Lord told me to move. The clouds moved. Where, where are you going? I'm going to Oregon. The cloud moved to Oregon? <laughs> so about six months later, he's back in church. I said, did the cloud move again? <laughs> you got to be careful about that. Listen, I'm not saying that the Lord won't lead you to go to church somewhere else or come here. I mean, We've had people, the Lord told me to come here. Well, I don't doubt that. I believe you. But my point is to, to play games with that. Is to play, listen to me. Is to play games with the grace of God. Okay. So, so you understand, there is a, 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 a wealth of kindness and forbearance and long-suffering patience. But don't be ignorant of the reason for it. And that is so you can change your mind and inner man to accept God's will and to walk in the will of God. Okay, y'all still with me? Until the day. Until the day. Okay. So, here's what you've got to understand, and I'm going to give you. I'm going to back up and give you the thirty thousand foot view here for a minute. Okay, so you've got to understand why God did all this. Okay, so let me read you a scripture. I'm going to just read a portion of this in Ephesians chapter three, verse one says, "For this reason, I, Paul." The prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentile, you're a Gentile, unless you were born a Jew. Anybody in here born a Jew? Okay, so you're Gentiles. Okay, so I'm talking to you. Okay. If indeed you have heard, now listen to this carefully, you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Now listen to what Paul said, which was given to me for you. Okay. You know what a dispensation is? It is a period of time. It is a set period of time. Now, I don't have time to get into this today, but I'm going to tell you that that time is 2,000 years. Again, I don't, I'm not going to go into that, but it's 2,000 years. Oh, you mean I got 2,000 years? No, your own year, 1,999 and a half. <laughs> Maybe three quarters. Maybe you're already at that time. And you're just living off of the fumes of grace from the past. I believe as long as the church is here, the grace is here. Okay? So Paul said, there is a dispensation of grace. So you go back, and I'm going to just show you this real quick, uh, because God worked in time frames with mankind. Now, he did it for a purpose, and I'm going to show you that purpose in a minute, okay? But listen, he worked in time frames. And the first dispensation was called innocence. That's Adam and Eve not knowing any better. Innocence. Purity. Guess what happened? They messed it up. Okay? 
Then from Adam until Noah, till the flood, was conscience. You got one of those, right? But I can tell you, you can sear that conscience. How do you know? I did it for years. I did it for years. I learned how to do it. So after the flood, God gave human government to people from Noah to Abraham. That's how they lived. So not everybody that's lived on the earth lived the same way. There are different men rules, different regulations, different operations. Then, now listen to this, God found a man by the name of Abram, and he changed his name to Abraham. Started a new process. It's called the time of promise. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and Joseph. It was a time of promise. And then the children of Israel were in bondage, and so the new, a new season came, and it was called law. Do this or die. Not that God wanted him to die, he wanted, but that's how he dealt with man, through, through law. And that law bumped all the way up to Jesus being born in Bethlehem. And after Jesus died on the cross, something else took place. That old covenant, that old law, the temple worship, that's why the Bible says that the, that the curtain of the Holy of Holies was torn from the top to the bottom. Not from the bottom up, from the top to the bottom. God split it open to open up the Holy of Holies to mankind. And so that started a new dispensation called the dispensation of grace. And according to the time frame that's spelled out in Daniel and other places, in, 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 the, in, the, in the Word of God, okay, that's a 2,000-year period. 2,000 years. That makes, that adds up to 6,000 years. Okay? The end that we're talking about is 6,000 years old. Then there's another dispensation. It's called the Millennium. And it's a thousand years, which would make seven, because God created for six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And a day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. Okay? So what we have to look forward to is the millennium. It's going to be cool for believers. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. But listen to me today, okay? I want, to, I want you to understand. So we're at the end of this dispensation of grace. In this grace time, God has revealed his true purposes, planned but hidden since the very beginning. God didn't create as he went along. From the moment Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden, he had a plan. He had a plan to bring man to a period of grace where God could work in their lives, work in their hearts, bring them to a place of holiness, as Becky was talking about, and purity and sincerity before God, where we became priests unto God and we walked in the, in the fullness of what God had for us on this earth. Nobody in the world, listen to me, has been able to commune with God the way you and I have the ability and the capability of doing since Adam and Eve transgressed in the garden. Why? Because we've got his Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. But this plan was a mystery. And, it, and it, it was hidden. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, this plan became, was revealed. 
And it was revealed, listen to me, to Paul. And really, Ephesians chapter 3, is a, you read the whole chapter, it exposes everything. So he made this great time period known, this period of grace. And right now, listen to me. Right now, anyone in this room who's not a Christian or been away from God can access the grace of God and God will immediately because of his loving kindness and his tender mercy that's available to us in this period of time, he will, re he will refresh you, he will renew you, he'll restore you, he'll recreate you because we're living in this time. It won't be available on that day. People are living like I got forever. You don't. You don't. I, I'm not, listen, I know this is scary stuff, but, but I'm going to tell you, don't kid yourself. People are living their lives like everything's fine. You better wake up and smell the coffee. This earth is, is, is travailing and groaning and the wickedness on this earth is getting bigger and greater and, and more malicious than ever before. That's not just happening, just happenstance. It's because we're almost there. We're almost there. And so we've got to walk in this grace, this favor from God, this, this wonderful favor because of Jesus that we can walk in. Let me read you a couple of scriptures. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 9. The message translation says it this way. My task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God who created all this in the first place has been doing in secret behind the scenes all along. Where we are today in this dispensation of grace, listen to me, where we are today, this dispensation of grace, God had planned to give man one last opportunity. I like the New Living Translation. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. You knew this all the time, didn't you, Lord? Yeah, he knows the end from the beginning. Not only does he know it, he declares it. He declares it. It was a mystery that was hidden in God from the beginning of time. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 says, ordained before the ages for our glory. 2 Corinthians 2, 8 says that if the, if the devil had known, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You know why? Because it unleashed this era of grace. And the whole, all the... Since it was unleashed, that's the devil's business is to try to stop God's grace from working, to try to get people bound up by the law, to try to get people bound up uh, in sin to where they can't access or won't access that grace, that wonderful grace, because anybody can be free. We're in, we're, in, we're in a free society with God right now. Anybody can be free. Anybody can, can be released. And it says in 1 Peter, let me read you a couple of verses. 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, And this salvation, what we've got, this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully for, now listen, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you. I'm going to show you this in a minute. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them indicating when he testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed, to these prophets, 
that not to themselves, listen, not to themselves, but to us. They were ministering the things which are now being reported to you through those who've preached the gospel by the Holy Spirit. In other words, let me put it to you in real plain English. Listen. The prophet said, well, what is this we're talking about? Well, what, what is this? What is all this we're, we're talking about? Uh, well, what is this? How is it that, uh, that and, and it talks about, I'm going to just tell you these real quick. Over in Genesis, it says that the woman's seed would bruise Satan's head. The woman doesn't have the seed. The man does. How's that going to happen? Well, we know. It's called a virgin birth. They wanted to know. They didn't know. They didn't understand that. They didn't get it. They, did, they didn't understand it. Moses didn't realize that when he was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, that was a type of Jesus delivering us out of the world. When he lifted up that bronze serpent to keep the snakes from killing everybody, he didn't know that that was a type of Jesus being lifted up on the cross. He didn't understand that, but we do. Why? Because we're living in that grace. When Isaiah, the great messianic prophet, loved, he didn't understand what he was asking about the virgin birth, about the government being on Jesus' shoulders. Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. He didn't understand. What am I saying? To this day, the Jewish scholars cannot explain that. But we know. We understand. Jeremiah and Ezekiel prophesied about a new covenant where God would take out the stony heart and put in a heart of flesh that, that we would understand and know because of the indwelling Holy Spirit. They didn't understand any of that. But the moment Jesus was raised from the dead, that grace flooded the earth by the gospel. Everywhere the gospel went, grace went. It's the same today. I don't care where you are. If you talk about Jesus, there's grace flowing. Somebody's going to grab that grace. Somebody's going to grab hold of it. That's why we go into all the world and preach the gospel. Somebody's going to be touched by that grace. So here's the part. I'm giving you the bottom line now. You ready? Here's the bottom line. The purpose. Okay? Here's the purpose for what God did to bring us to this grace dispensation that's about to be over. It's going to shock you. This was his purpose. Because it's been so maligned and misused. Listen to what it says. I'm going to read this out of, it's an older translation, the Weymouth translation, but I love the way it says this in Ephesians 3.10. It is the stewardship of the truth which from all ages lay concealed in the mind of God, the creator of all things. Concealed in order that the church, everybody say church, church. might now be used to display the powers and authorities in the heavenly realms, the innumerable aspects of God's wisdom. All this grace is about God putting it all in a church. Now, I'm not talking about our church. We're part of it. Any church that's willing to stand on the authority that's been given us by the, the name of Jesus. Any power, we've got it. Well, I don't see that happening. Oh, it's coming. I believe it's coming before we're taken out of this earth. I really do. I believe the church is going to be energized in a greater way than it ever has to do more. Well, we're going to do this outside the church. No, you're not. Oh, yeah, this is going to happen. No, you no. That's not God's plan. God's plan is the church. Well, that, that means those that are gathered together. 
The express purpose of God's church is to reveal or to show forth His product, His Word, His gift, the fruits of the Spirit, the power of God. And we're that church. No wonder Jesus said that's how He was going to build His church. I'm just about finished, but listen. The Amplified Bible, verse 11, the next verse says this. This is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose which he realized and carried into effect in the person of Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is where God wants to work, in the church. Well, guess what? I'm not the church. This building's not the church. But tell you a secret. You're the church. So you're going to have to start acting responsibly. It's like those commercials, you know, on TV about drink responsibly. Nobody drinks responsibly. <laughs> How do you know? Because I was one of them. <laughs> oh, I'm going to just have one beer. Just give me one shot. No, that ain't, that's just not the way it works. Okay. So listen, we have to be responsible. You've got to wake up, folks, and, and, and understand that the will of God is, in, 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 uh, uh, is that you, got, you have to be connected to the local church. You have to be active because that's where God's grace is activated. And then you take that outside the four walls. Well, you ought to preach more about this or that. It ain't got anything to do with what I preach. It's what you do with what you've got. Okay? So let me read you one more scripture and I'm done. I got my fingers crossed, but... Uh, Romans, Romans chapter 16, verse 25 and verse 26. Now listen to this. Now to him who is able to strengthen you in the faith, which is, is in, which is in accordance with my gospel and the preaching of concerning Jesus Christ and Messiah, according to the revelation, the unveiling of the mystery of the plan of redemption, which was kept in silence and secret for long ages. That's the grace that he's talking about. But is now disclosed through the prophetic scriptures and is made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God. Now listen, to win them to obedience to the faith. To win them to obedience to the faith. So listen, <clears throat> you've got to hear this. Listen, we are at the end of the great endeavor of God to redeem mankind to himself. We're there. We're, we're, we're there. We've got to do our part. We've got to rise up and realize what's important. What's, what's valuable. And the challenge is to walk in his grace all the way to the end. Don't get weary. Don't get discouraged. Walk it all the way to the end. And we're about there. We are. I, I believe that, that most believers, if they have any sense of the Spirit of God, already know that. Already know that. I believe the Holy Spirit's drawing people back into the fold that have been away from God but for that very reason. I want you to bow your heads with me. <clears throat> now, I want you to listen to me carefully. And I'm going to ask you if you could just stay steady for a minute. If you could not move around because you're going to disturb somebody. I mean, you're going to beat the Baptist to lunch anyway, so just hang in there for a few minutes. My goodness. Listen to me. If you're here today 
and you've been outside of the grace of God, you've been away from the things of God, maybe you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you, you, you don't have that favor, that grace working in your life, today is your day. And I, I don't take this lightly today, that if you're here today, and, and this, ought to, this ought to stir you up because we're coming to the end of that grace. So you have to take advantage of it while it's available. And you're here and you've never made Jesus Lord. You've been away from God. You haven't been doing what you know is right to do. You can access God's forgiveness. That's His grace working. Forgiveness is God's grace working. And you're here and you say, pray for me. I want you to lift your hand right now and say, that's me, Pastor. Pray for me. Lift your hand right now if that's you. Look, I'm looking. Now, now what you're telling me is, is there somebody back there? I can't see. Somebody in the back raising their hand. Anyone else? Over here. Thank you. I see your hand. Anyone else? Over here. I see someone. Anyone else? Now, if that's you, you raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to be bold this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand up where you're seated right now. Come on, stand up where you're seated right now. In the back, over here. And I'm going to ask you to slip out of your seat and come right here and meet me right now. Come on. Come meet me right here. I want to pray with you. Now, listen. Come on. While they're coming... <clears throat> While they're coming, I want you to turn to your neighbor right now and say, hey, do you need to go? I'll go with you right now. Come on, come over here. Come, yeah, just say, hey, you need to go. I'll go with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Anyone else? Come on. You know, I, I don't want to. Do you know, do you understand the, the gravity of, of what's happening today with these men coming to the front? Listen to me. It is disrespectful for people to think the service is over because they're not involved anymore. When, when these men have come down here to step over into the grace of God. Now, I can say that now because they all got up and left. And you're still here. You probably wouldn't dare get up now, would you? Well, you might. I wouldn't be surprised, but please don't. We need to respect what God's doing here. Now, listen to me. Listen to me. Look at me. You're not joining a church this morning, okay? We're accessing the grace of God today. We're, we're grabbing hold of God's grace for our lives today, okay? That means God's gonna, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter how many times you've been to an altar. It doesn't matter because today, God's grace is available to work in your life, to forgive you, to cleanse you, to empower you, to walk forward living for Him. This is not a one-time deal. We're, we're making a new life. We're making a new step, a new movement forward to not today. Amen? All right, so I want you just to pray. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to help you. Uh, I had to have somebody help me when I came to the altar, so I'm going to help you. And I'm going to lead you in prayer. And we're going to pray together. And then the Holy Spirit's going to work in your life. We also have men that are going to be standing behind you. They're going to take you right over to the side here and pray with you personally as well. So if you would, just pray this with me. Congregation, just pray with us as well. Say, Father, thank you for your grace that your son Jesus provided for me, that I can come to you now, regardless of what's happened in the past and to receive forgiveness 
to receive cleansing and to walk in the fullness of all that you have for me. I accept Jesus as my Lord, as my Savior. I choose Him now above the world and everything else. And I ask you right now to work your strength, your power, your grace in my life today. I can't do this on my own. I must have your help. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I might walk in your strength, in your power, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Now listen, there's a man standing behind you. I want you to turn to your left and just step right over here and let them just pray with you personally today. God bless you. God bless you, man. Come on, give them a hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, you know, some people might think, well, you know, Pastor, you, you, you're, that God will always have grace. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The next step that's coming is not grace, it's wrath. So now's the time to receive His grace in your life. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I know I went long today, but you might as well get used to it. I don't know what's going on, but, but hey, listen, I didn't watch the LSU game last night, but how long was it? And how long did you watch it? How long? To the end. Well, I tell you, that pastor, he's been preaching too long. It's almost noon. Give me a break. I'm not apologizing. You needed to hear it. And I needed to say it. <laughs> Stand up with me. Let me pray with you. We'll be dismissed. <clears throat> hey, I want to remind everyone we're having prayer tomorrow night. And Marcus Tanker is going to be here with us. He's not coming to preach. I'm sure he'll exhort for a few minutes. But we've, we're, we're going to be praying. So, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, come, you'll learn. You can catch it. Father, we bless you. We worship you. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty grace, your loving kindness, your long suffering, your kindness toward us. And thank you for working in us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow night.